We can spend a lifetime learning. I'm turned the corner. I'm done with some stuff that I need to. I'm not real anxious to learn how to operate my computer any better than I already do. I hobble around enough. But I'll tell you what, we can spend a lifetime learning all the wrong things. And until we learn to know the love of God, we haven't encountered truth, we haven't encountered healing. Amen. I'm thankful for the love of God this morning. I want to minister to you today on the trusting the trust the process. And uh, I was, the Lord had been giving me some thoughts and things to put together in the scriptures to go with it. And um, I'm just going to ask the Lord to bless this word. Not that I hear myself, but that your soul hears what God has for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just ask this morning, this word find lodging in our hearts. It bring revelation and that it reveal your truth. And we ask this in your name, Father. Amen. I looked up the word. I like to look up definitions because, you know, sometimes we think we know something and then it's nice to read it in black and white. But a process is a series of actions or steps to achieve a particular end. So many of us, we don't think about that, but we do processes every day in our life. We take certain steps to do certain things throughout the course of our day. Your jobs probably involve a certain process. And the thing that I was thinking about, change equals a process, amen? And we know we've been in the process of change here in this body of Christ. And uh, there are steps to take, and we're taking our steps. And we're going to trust the process that God has set before us. We don't trust man's process. We trust God's process, amen? Um, it's just an important thing to keep a reminder that we're following and fulfilling the work and the will of God, not the work and the will of man. Amen? I have a process. I sent Dale a really cute thing on, well, I think it's cute, on Instagram, and it shows a printer, and it prints a thing, and it says, when the wife tells the husband, like, something you're going to do or supposed to do, and it shows the printer, the paper, come, it processes through the printer, comes right off the printer, and then it goes straight down and hits the shredder. <coughs> Any ladies give a how to amen, 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 and then they, then they follow up with, I didn't hear that. No, there's a process. There's a process to planning a trip. There's a process to a recipe. All of us walk out a process. We may not identify it as a process, but I want to, I want to speak to your hearts this morning. First Corinthians 1 and 8. I'm going to take one scripture here. And I want us to just look at this one. It said, Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? And I wanted us to take the thought this morning, because of Christ, we're entering the Easter season. But I don't want us to only focus on the cross and the Easter season and the death and resurrection of our Savior just this time of year. We need to be thankful 24, day, 24 hours a day, 52 weeks a year. We need to be mindful of the price that was paid for our sins on the cross. Amen? So we want to know that all of this is because of Christ. It's as his accomplishment on the cross for the believers. Amen? And that's how it says here, that because of the cross, because of the believer's ability to be able to repent and believe on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it says, the scripture here says, he can confirm you unto the end. I'm headed somewhere with this. I have a process I'm working on this morning. But we know that Christ can confirm us to the end. And I think sometimes, I don't know how you guys are, uh, years ago when I was young, and you know, we were younger married, and I would save my candles. I would save things for special occasions. Anybody in the house do that? Now, man, I'm burning candles like nobody's business. I'm using things. Because sometimes we get so destination focused that we don't enjoy the journey. Anybody ever struggled with that? Um, I'm imagining, I'll just call names. Bob, you're probably already realized there's a cherry harvest, Morris. There's a harvest coming. But you got to walk out the process to the harvest. Don't 
lose focus of your day to day because you're so destination minded. Does, does that work? For, I almost said, does that make sense? Does that work for you guys this morning? We want to enjoy the journey that God has set before us. I don't want you just destination focused. And if you can learn to trust the process that God has established for mankind, you can be, enjoy the journey and you can reach your destination. Amen. I love the song in that we were singing that last song. Um, We've got a wedding garment that's being prepared for the church, and it's going to have to be spotless. It's going to have to be prepared. It's not going to have. It can't be patched up and marred. And the blood of Jesus Christ will keep us in preparation for His return. Amen. I was sure as I'm standing here, I like to preach butterflies and you know happy puppies and all that. But the reality is, we must confess our sins before God, and we want to make sure we have secured a position. For our destination. Amen? Amen. That other stuff's all fun and fluffy, but it won't take you to heaven. Right. We want to be born again, spirit-filled believers in Jesus Christ. And the more that you can trust the process, the more you're going to enjoy your journey. Amen? I was thinking of this. Um, if you can't trust, trust is a funny thing, isn't it? But we can trust a God that created all of us, created all of this, and then he saw the need to redeem the sinful soul of man, and he sent his son, Jesus Christ. If you can't trust that, I don't know what to tell you, but I trust God. He's made a way, he's prepared a way, and uh, he has us in his heart. He has us on his mind, and we wanna learn to trust the process, and the process of salvation is certainly not something that I can create. It's not something that I've established. It's what God established as his pattern, how our process to become saved is. Amen. Turn with me to Philippians, the first chapter. We're going to read verses 3 through 6 this morning. This is a letter Paul has written to the Philippians. And uh, I think, if I remember, I read some of my study Bible notes, that this the church had maybe been established about 10 years when he's writing this to them. And this is where I want us to trust the process this morning. Amen? Philippians 1, 3 through 6, Paul has a prayer of thankfulness. He's thankful for the church of, of the Philippian church. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? That right there is the process. We're going to trust the process. I like in verse 5, it says, your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And we recognize this church was established. Um, our historian Joyce and some of the ladies, they know the year. They know when we were things were established. That was the beginning of our process. And we're just processing forward to the kingdom. Amen? Now, let me throw this in for free. It's not in my notes. Change is hard. Change is uncomfortable. And change sometimes moves us. Now, I'm not talking just here. It moves us into the unknown. Uh, our neighbors moved from that other side over there. We're happy to have them here with us today. But there was change, and there was unknown when you make a change like that. But we have to trust God. It's his process in our lives that will save us. It's his process in our lives that will redeem us. Amen? It's not anything else but the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us this morning. I want to leave you with some thoughts today. Um, you've got to trust the process. And when I say trust the process... Trust what God has for you and just walk it out with confidence saying, you know what? You've got this, Lord. I'm going to choose to trust your process. And then the next thing I want you to do when you're trusting God is learning to enjoy. Nobody likes this part, but I'm going to tell you twice. Learn to enjoy being a work in progress. None, I'll just tell you, none of us have arrived. 
and none of us have reached perfection. We are a work in progress. Amen. And I'm thankful that he allows us time to be a work in progress. Amen. And I'm thankful that he, he comes along beside us. I'm thankful that his Holy Spirit in us guides us, directs us, moves us. So I want you to enjoy being a work in progress. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be comfortable, but you won't die. Okay? Just be a work in progress. Remind yourself. On the day you feel like you want to beat yourself up because maybe you failed or maybe you've made a mistake, just think, Lord. Now, I'm not saying you can just do, live willy-nilly. You make a mistake. Lord, help me. I'm a work in progress, and you are progressing me forward to the kingdom. Amen? Don't be focused on the arrival. Amen? I tell you guys this, and I have a sense of humor, and, and if you're not comfortable with my sense of humor, I love you anyway. Uh, I always say, I'm going to slide in heaven sideways. I'm going to show up used up and busy and living life full. But I'm not focusing just on my arrival. I'm enjoying the power of the living God during my journey. See, we don't want to be so arrival. Poor Dale. Can you guys get along? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. He has it rough. Uh, when we were first married, and I born and raised in California, about 45 miles inland from San Francisco, and uh, we would go to California on a road trip. And I don't like the travel part. And I just drive straight through. And it's about an 18-hour drive. And I'm just like, I, you, I should have been a trucker for a living, huh? It's just drive straight through and get where you're going. And I didn't enjoy the process. So Dale would say, I feel, this is so bad. He'd say, oh, he'd never been there. He'd never even been through the state of Oregon. And he would say, oh, look at that, let's stop. And I'd say to myself, mm. and I'd say, on the way home, okay? <laughs> and we would just dead head straight to, San, to my hometown, or where I grew up. And then he'd see something else, and he'd say, oh, look at that. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> On the way home. So one time we stopped in there in Oregon. There's a real deep, um, I don't even know where it's at, a gorge, and there's a bridge. And we stopped to use the restroom. We were traveling with my cousin and my mom. Well, he got escaped out of the car. And I thought, well, he'll just walk over and look. Oh, no, he climbed down the gorge. And I'm like, to me, I'm standing there. I'm like this. Time's a ticking. We don't have time to dilly-dally. Now at this age, I look back and I apologize. We should have enjoyed the journey, not just been full. I was so focused on arriving at our destination, I didn't enjoy the journey. And I'm, I know that may seem a little funny or that's just how I still like to travel like that. Now at this age, when you get where you're going and you've driven for 18 hours, you can't stand up. You gotta have somebody to get, help you get moving, you know, or you just stand up and hope for the best. Anybody? Come on. But see what I'm saying? In this life, each of us, it says this, and I don't say this, I don't say this lighthearted. The scripture says it's appointed once unto man to die. And each of us have an appointment. We don't know when, and that's the key. So we want to enjoy our journey until our name is called. Amen. And I really want you to do that because it's important. And to be able to do that, you're going to have to trust the process that God's established for mankind. And if you can learn to do that, I'll tell you, it'll carry you through hard days. Amen. We want to know that we are being changed in Jesus Christ. Being perfected in Christ is a process. Amen. How many of you remember when you first came to Christ and you repented of your sins? I can guarantee you didn't go home perfect that day. But you begin to walk in the spirit of the living God and he begins to change you. He begins to speak to your heart. He begins to challenge you in arenas of your life. Can I just say this? He challenges you in arenas of your life that are not pretty. Amen? And he gets down in your business. So I like it when God gets in my business. I don't always like it right at the moment. But later, I'm always grateful he's in my business. Amen? So we want to be perfected in Christ. Because it's his process not our process. Amen. How many, my mother-in-law was a, a stellar canner 
Back in the day, they canned their pantries full. And I don't like anything you got to pressure cook. That's too long. Who's got time for that? But there's a process because it's for your safety. You don't want to eat something. I, what is it canned good? I'm just taking side trips today. Botulism. Yes. You don't want sick. Trust the process. Amen? You can quite a bit. Trust the process. And I want you, these seem like just silly little things, but if they can make you think to trust the process that God's established for, you'll have a, a life that's abundant. You'll have a life that's happy. You'll have a life that fulfills you as God desires to. Remember verse 6. He that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day. He's going to walk that process out with you. Sometimes in our Christian walk, we feel like we're stagnant or we're stuck or we're just hanging on by a thread. Hmm. God began a good work in you when he saved your soul. Now allow him to walk it out with you. Allow him to finish it. It says, he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. So let God do a good work in you as you're walking out this process. I want to leave you with this thought this morning. Our faith does not numb us in the process. Do you believe that this morning? You know, and I'm not, I, my heart hurts for addictions. My heart hurts for people that are struggling but a lot of, we see so much of our society today, they're medicating their pain, they're medicating their hurt, they're medicating disappointments with many different things. And the faith that we have in Jesus Christ does not numb us to the process. We need to feel the process. We don't medicate the process. We need to very much feel the process. Why? Because he guides us. He nurtures us, and we've got to learn to trust the process. Amen? And I can guarantee you, if you'll walk in faith and just ask the Lord to help you trust his process, you'll be an overcoming Christian. I can guarantee it. Amen? Trust equals a firm belief. It's reliable, and it's truth. Amen? So today, this week, I want you to think about this in your day-to-day -day business. Reach out and just trust the process because God has us. We used to sing that old, he's got the whole world in his hands. I'll tell you what, God has the believers in his hands. We're not fearful of the future. We're not fearful of whatever the world is, is progressing along. We're not fearful of that. We hold God in our hearts and we're going to trust the process. Amen.